What's going on everybody? Thank you for checking out this video. My name is Tyler. For those of you who don't know me, I am a photographer and videographer here in Buffalo, New York, who is newer to film photography, who decided to make a channel that you are watching right now uh, to document that process and what I learned. Um, so if that's what you're, you're into, um, I'd love to have you subscribe. In today's video, I want to talk about a camera that I've had um, for like 10 years now, but I actually haven't put, I think only like three rolls through it, um, two recently and one way back when I first got it that I don't really remember how it looked. And because I don't really know how to pronounce half these camera names, I'm just gonna call it the Konica. Uh, it's a Konica C35EF, and I found it at a um, thrift store for like five, $10, and thought it looked super cool. Um, and learning more about it, um, it actually is supposedly, um, what's his name, Andy Warhol's favorite camera. Uh, it's the first camera with a built-in flash, which is, I can focus. There we go, boom. Um, pretty neat, um, I don't use it because I think built-in flash looks awful. But um, yeah, super cool. Uh, I think it's pretty innovative for its time. And um, I really wanted something that's more of a point and shoot um, that I don't have to worry about the focusing as much that I can just kind of bring around with me that was still film just to have those um, easy access photos without having to take the time to focus and all that kind of stuff and you know, figure out your aperture, your shutter speed, all that kind of stuff. Um, so I was hoping that this would do the job. So I did put two rolls of film through it. I put a roll of uh, Ilford HP5 through it and uh, Kodak Ultramax. Um, I didn't want to spend too much money on the film because I didn't know how this was going to look. Um, and the results were not what I was expecting. And a spoiler alert, I didn't like any of the photos this camera took. So a few facts about this camera. It has a 38 millimeter f2.8 lens, which uh, is a sharp lens. It's actually a pretty nice lens based off everything I've read. Um, few things I didn't like about this camera is its ASA only goes up to 400. So if I wanted to put something like an 800 speed film in there or even higher, you, you really can't unless you're gonna you know, set it to 400. But um, uh, it does have a self timer, which is neat. I think one thing that really limits it is that it only has three shutter speeds. Uh, and that is one one six or one sixtieth, uh, one one twenty fifth, and I think the newer model like this one has a one two fiftieth, um, which does limit it um, in, in lower light conditions, um, which was evident in the photos. It does use like a zone focusing system um, where you just kind of estimate wh where your focus should be um, on the side of the lens and in the viewfinder. You have little pictures of a you know a person close up, a person from waist up, a full person, and some mountains. Um, so uh, you just kind of estimate and hope that you're guessing. Uh, I will say it is really hard to tell if something is five feet away from you or seven feet away from you. I find myself just kind of saying like, if I laid down, would my head touch that? And you know, that's six feet. Um, so that was a little bit, a little bit of a learning curve. Um, and what's just tough because the, the, the viewfinder doesn't tell you if you're in focus. You really are just guessing. Now, like I already alluded to, um, I didn't like pretty much any of the photos that came out of this camera. Um, I, which I was so such a bummer because I, I like this camera. I think it looks so cool, um, which I'm definitely gonna keep it on my shelf. But um, it's not gonna be something I shoot with often because it's for what I got out of it. I just don't think it can handle day-to-day -day conditions unless you shoot outside and in bright light. Um, but for what I wanted to use it for, of like a point and shoot and all around, um, it just didn't produce what I wanted it to. Um, and a lot of the photos um, in any kind of tricky lighting situation, it it just sucked. Um, which, I mean, I guess I shouldn't have expected um, too much more out of this camera because of what it offers. Um, but I was still hoping that it would um, be able to produce something a little bit better. Um, outside in daylight, it did fine. I'm not upset with them. Um, and while it's nice to not have to worry about your shutter speed and your aperture, um, that kind of is important and for the issues that I'm explaining. Um, and then with the guessing on focus, that's the worst part. Because um, if you don't really know where you are, uh, in terms of focusing and you know you can have a, a really well exposed photo if it's out of focus who cares um, versus if you have something that's really in focus and exactly how you wanted it to be um, focus wise but the exposure was a little off there's a little bit more leeway there now to be fair it does have that built-in flash which would help out in indoor situations and i did use it a few times but um, this i've never liked on camera flash i think it always looks like crap uh, it really creates really harsh shadows really bad vignetting um, I guess it is a little more forgivable on like the, the black and white film. Um, I'll show you some of the photos that I did of that. Um, but overall, I got like six pictures that I liked 
And uh, at first I wasn't sure if it was, I mean, it was my first time using HP5 as well. So I wasn't sure if it was just the, the graininess of that film that made it look as bad as it did. But I've seen photos of HP5 use uh, on Instagram and stuff like that and they look way better. Um, so I'm just gonna assume that the camera just couldn't get the light that it needed to get to that film. Um, which, like I said, isn't the end of the world. I'm glad it wasn't like something super serious or um, something to put a lot of time into. These are kind of just like off the hip shots, somewhere out of a car window, um, somewhere neat. And I think I'm gonna use some of them on my Instagram and stuff, but I would say out of two rolls of film, I got maybe eight pictures that I like, um, which uh, kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Part of the process is learning new cameras and uh, how new film works. I'm definitely gonna try shooting more HP5 because I, I, I don't hate black and white. I just think um, color has a lot more ability to um, convey emotion or uh, a story. Um, I just enjoy color way more, but um, black and white definitely has a moodiness to it and um, it's fun to shoot. Uh, you have a whole different mentality when you have black and white. It's a, it's a weird way to explain it. I'm sure you might know what I'm talking about. Uh, if you have a Porsche 400 versus a really nice black and white film, um, you, you do approach them differently. And I think that's really fun to be able to switch your brain on and off to uh, different types of film. I'm gonna roll through some of the photos for both rolls of film that I shot with the Konica C35 EF. Um, let me know what you think in the comments if you like any of them um, or if you don't like any of them. If you've used this camera, let me know and maybe I'm doing something wrong or if, uh, uh, if you have any tips and tricks, that'd be great. Cause like I said, this camera is sick. Um, I think it looks really cool. Um, and I'd like to keep using it, but um, for now it's gonna go on my shelf. I'm just gonna use the trusty old uh, AE-1 and um, go from there. In terms of what's coming up next for me, I do have a few videos planned that hopefully will be coming out over the next few weeks. I shot, I think, two rolls of Porsche 400 that I want to review. I got some really cool photos out of that. And I shot a roll of CineSil 800T, um, which was a really fun experience. I have a lot to say about that. Though I don't have the balls to bring my camera to record me on these photo walks. Um, hopefully in the future, I will you know, end up doing that. Um, I, I don't know, it's just a weird thing to bring another camera with you, set it up, walk 10 feet. So whoever does that, and you guys, I commend you. Uh, maybe if I have a few more subscribers, uh, it'll help embolden me to do that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I thought some of those photos are my favorite that I've taken to date, and I can't wait to show them with you. Um, and in another video I have planned, I actually have chemicals and stuff to start developing my own film here at home. Um, I'm gonna make a video of my experiences doing that. Uh, so I thank you for watching this video if you have. If you haven't already, please subscribe and uh, follow me on learning film and you know, screwing things up and maybe uh, getting some things right here and there. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day and happy shooting.